Hey, what's up everyone? It's your girl, Brandy Shanae, and today I'll be sharing with you my February wrap up. And I am back and also if you're new to my channel, welcome. If not, welcome back. So like I said before, this is my February wrap up. Now I know a lot of you were like, man, this is a, this is a short month and I agree. It is a short month. And so I read less than what I had read in January. In February, I read a total of 12 books and in January, I read 16 books. Um, so it definitely was a little bit less, but then again, I pretty much didn't pressure myself <laughs> because I knew that February was the shortest month ever. So, and it was also Black History Month. So it was a short month and it's Black History Month. So you, you, you get it, you get it. But in the middle of February, I had done a mid-month wrap up. So I'll leave that up above so you can check out all the books I had read earlier in the month of February. And now we're gonna be talking about the last books I had read in the end of February. So I only read a total of, I believe six books or five actually. And let's go and start with this picture book right here, which is unspeakable. It is the Tulsa Race Massacre. And this is by uh, Carol Boston Weatherford or Weatherford. And then the um, illustrator is Floyd Cooper. Now I read this book of five out of five stars. I read this to my kids and I read it a few times myself. Um, and this is talking about the Tulsa Race Massacre. And a lot of people know, well, I can't say a lot. I know some people are no know, known, uh, have known about this massacre that had happened. Um, and then with, and I rated this a five to five stars because I love the illustrations of the book, but I also loved how real it was and it didn't sugarcoat not one thing. So it was talking about the town in Greenwood, which uh, in that area was known as the Black Wall Street, where the Black community, they left the um, segregated South to go up North in Tulsa. And they wanted to have a new life where they could start their own things, have their own businesses, have something of their own. So they would save up in order to make this this dream of theirs come true because that that was America, right? You know, where your dreams would come true. And which still they, they thought, right? And so during this time and during before the Tulsa Race Massacre, it, the town was flourishing. But of course, there was also jealousy by the white people in the community who felt like they were having too much wealth. They were flourishing in a magnificent amount of time and they just wanted to stop that let's just be honest that's how it was they wanted to stop the wealth of black people so one day a man goes into elevator with and you know with the white woman and the white woman accused him of pretty much tossing with her and, and touching her and stuff like that and that wasn't and that wasn't the case and so he was put in prison and so they were, and so the white people in that community was threatening to hang him, lynch him and everything. But the black community from Greenwood, from a lot of the vets from World War One, came together with their, with their, their guns, their pistols, everything to make sure that didn't happen. And so that's what a whole war, like a civil war uh, happened in Tulsa. Next thing you know, and the, the white community goes to Greenwood, they start burning down every single thing, including houses with people inside. And they even made sure, like, they bombed their church. Like, they literally had a plane fly over their church and drop a bomb on them. And so, with this event, it, 300 people were killed. You had um, the 100, 100 uh, people, or hundreds, excuse me, hundreds were injured. And then more than 8,000 people were homeless during this time. I think I love this book, which is why I gave it a 5 of 5 stars, because it was, like I said, it was authentic, you know, it was real. It was realistic. It did not sugarcoat not one thing. It showed the positive how the black community came together and made and made a town where black people were welcomed and were loved and and everybody praised them for their for their accomplishments. And then I can't imagine like if I was able to go back to the past and just walk through that town on how black people were had their own businesses. Uh, they valued each other. They help each other out. It's like, I, I want, I hope that can be a thing again, where we have Black Wall Streets once again, and that we all come together once again and support and uplift each other once again. I really hope that happens. And so I, like I said, I, I read this book a five out of five stars. It was accurate. 
to what happened during that time. It didn't sugarcoat anything. My kids loved it. And so of course, it's an automatic five star for me. The next book that I had read, which was a graphic novel, and that is The Girl from the Sea. And this is by Molly Knox Osterdog. This was a really cute story. We're featuring, featuring a girl named Morgan who pretty much is going through a lot in her household. Her mother and father were arguing and her little brother and her and her did not get along very well. Next thing you know, their pam her father moves to the city and they got a divorce. So she's having a very hard time and then she has a secret that she wants that she just doesn't want to share with anyone. And so one day she goes to, you know, goes to the sea and she almost drowned until someone saved her. And the, the person that saved her, her name is Kelty. But on top of that, she's also, also a Selkie. And Morgan was just enthralled with Kelty. She liked Kelty. And she even told Kelty her secrets of her being gay. And Kelty, she just fell in love with Morgan. Um, just because, you know, she was human. And she just really liked, she liked, like, really start loving Morgan. Um, and so with the, with her loving Morgan, she was able to go to the shore and walk on land with Morgan. But as, like I said, Morgan had a secret. She did not tell anyone except Kelty that she was gay. Um, so she was trying to make their relationship private. She didn't want nobody to know much about Kelty or who Kelty was. Um, but her friends were feeling neglected by her because they were constantly texting Morgan, see what she was doing, you know, what their plans were. You should go here, go to the movie with us. She just ignored them completely and was just having a good time with Kelty and hanging out. And so one day her brother caught them kissing. And then she pretty much, he pretty much saying, oh yeah, I saw her kiss a girl. And her mother was like, Oh, but you know, Morgan thinking like, oh my gosh, my mom is going to just freak out. And so Morgan ran away. But then her mother came to her and say, it is okay. There's nothing wrong with that. I am an ally. And I really love this graphic novel so, so much. I love the graphics. I love everything about it. And then on top of that, Kelsey also had a mission of her own and her own secret. And that was to approach the person or company, whoever had built a company or a well or whatever in the ocean that was spilling oil and causing the fish to p die and Ke since Kelty is a selkie her family would also be in danger if they didn't stop the oil spill so eventually Morgan her, Morgan's best friend that she was neglecting told her about this so they put that to end but once selkie but once um Kelty sorry Kelty went back into the ocean to not only stop the oil spill and everything but to save Morgan's friend best friend she was pretty much she had to stay in the ocean she couldn't go to shore and be with Morgan it will be seven years later so literally after every seven years she would be able to go on shore and so her time was up that one day where she was with Morgan that time was up and it sort of reminded me of like the little mermaid a little bit and I just really loved this story so, so much. Um, but I love this graphic novel. It deals with family, it deals with romance um, and first love. And I love this so, so much. Now, I don't know if Molly Knox is going to ha does have any more graphic novels. If she does, I will definitely read them because I found this very fascinating and I love this story. It was just so so cute. The next book that I had read was Our Violent Ends by Chloe Gong. This is a duology. The first book was uh, These Violent These Violent Delights, I believe. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, I believe These Violent Delights. And so this is the second book of the duology, Our Violent Ends. And this is continuing the story of Roma and Juliet. Now this is very close to a retelling. The first book was a little bit different. This one was definitely a retelling of Romeo and Juliet full blown. You know, there was love, betrayal. You didn't know if you could trust one another. And that was a thing when it came to Roma and Juliet. Now in this, in these two books, you're dealing with gangs. One is the White Flower Gang, which they're Russian. And then you also have the Scarlet Gang. Roma is in the White Flowers Game. And of course, gang. <laughs> and then Juliet is a Scarlet. Is a Scarlet. Um, so they, eventually it was weird because the families came together to pretty much have a common cause to find the traitor within the White Flower Gang. And then come to find out within each of their families, they both had a traitor um, and they had to deal with it in a way. But during this time where they're trying to figure out, you know, where they stand between the white flowers and the scarlets, you also have a war between the nationalists and the communists. And so the scarlets, they're like, okay, if we can, we should definitely 
uh, communicate with the nationalists, work with them so we can keep our territory. And that way we can just get rid of the white flowers, period. And they pretty much ha put a label on the white flowers saying they're communist. So you have this war amongst not only gangs, but also communists and nationalists as well during this time. And this is during between the 1920s. Um, so you deal with that, but then you also see how the relationship was growing within Romeo and uh, Roma, excuse me, Roma and Juliet, and how they began to trust each other until at the very end, you know, there's a mystery if they died or if they lived during this time. And I found this very, very fascinating. Um, I believe I gave it, uh, like four stars. Um, and I just love this. Even on the back, it says the year is 1927 and Shanghai teeters on the edge of revolution. And that was pretty much, that sums it up what it was, was it really about in this book, a revolution. And I think out of the whole book, I love this more than the first one. Because I feel like this was truly, like, the first one, yes, it introduces us to Roma and Juliet in their past and then goes into their present about the madness that was occurring in Shanghai. Then we focus more on them and the, and the gangs themselves and if they choose loyalty or if they choose themselves. And Juliet, I will say, especially Roma, they both chose each other. At that time, they felt like loyalty was everything and family was everything. But Juliet felt like Roma was also part of her family and he was family to her. And she chose herself over her family. She sacrificed, she killed, killed her family to be with Roma and saved Roma's life from her family. And Roma did the same thing for Juliet. Like I said, I love this book. I gave it four, four stars. And I'm sad that this duology is over, but I really am, um, I'm glad that there's going to be a spinoff for this that Chloe Gong is doing. I know they did uh, like a cover reveal, which I'll leave it up above right here uh, for the next book that'll be coming out. I think it's going to be coming out later on this year in 2022. So I definitely will pick that up. It sounds great. I do love the cover. It's pretty, it's gorgeous to me. I know some people didn't, but it's pretty to me. So I definitely want to continue on reading Chloe Gong because I love her writing. I love her work. I love what she brings as far as... Um, the world that she's created and the love interest between Roma and Juliet. Like, I, hopefully, I hope that she can continues on doing that. But yeah, I gave this a four out of five stars. Our Violet Ends by Chloe Gong. The next book that I had read, which is also another graphic novel, and I actually did a review about it, and that is The Rima Chronicles, Realm of the Blue Mist. This is by Amy Kim Kibibushi. I really, really enjoyed this graphic novel. I gave it a four out of five stars. Um, but if you want to check out that review, I will leave it up above so you can get more information about this amazing new installments and new graphic novel by this amazing author. Um, but yeah, the book is out. So you definitely can purchase the graphic novel and see for yourself what it's about. But like I said, my review is up above for you to watch if you're more intrigued and want to know more about this gorgeous book right here. And then last but not least, I'm part of the Poppy War Read Along um, with a lot of co-hosts and also the host of the Read Along is Erica from The Broken Spine. And we read the first book, The Poppy War, Poppy War by R.F. Kwong. I love this book. Um, it was very deep. I had to put it down when I at least got to chapter 21. Like after 21, I had to put it down for a minute because it deals with war. But we also deal with Ren. Ren, who is an outsider in this world, who pretty much the odds was against her the entire time just because of the color of her skin. So there's colorism in this book. Um, and just because of where she came from and also because she was a woman. And during this time, she wanted to do something for herself and you know she took the test in order to get into uh, Syngard, Syngard which is an academy and she was able to fight and learn certain things not only about herself but also about the you know about her city uh, and to defend her city and then come to find out later on as things happened she some people feel like she might be a spearly but during this time when she's at this academy she learns more things about herself, but she also is intrigued by Alton, who's like the top person in the Academy of in Seingard. And Ren found himself, found him very interesting. And I found him interesting. I'm like, okay, there's a love interest in this book. Okay, I think I can, I can get into this. But then war breaks out uh, from, and the war that occurs is, uh, you know, between uh, uh, Mugen, the Federation. And so Ren is, Ren, during this time, I'm trying to make it, I'm not trying to make it so complex, but 
Rin starts to, to notice certain things about Alton later on within the book and about his past, about the drugs that he uses and he constantly uses in order to, to get rid of his pain because he is he is a Spearly and the Spearlies were pretty much killed. It was a, it was genocide. And, you know, there were talks that he was the only Spearly. Sorry. And since he was the only Spearly, he also witnessed the deaths of thousands of people, thousands of his people. And that and that was that was you know, we can only imagine what that can do to you mentally. And then on top of that, the Federation also were doing experiments on him. Now, this is during a time of war. This is very, it's very interesting how when we were reading this, you know, we also are dealing, you know, with what's happening in Ukraine, uh, between Ukraine and Russia. And it's, it's, it really breaks down the things about war and how gruesome it can be and, and how if you're an innocent civilian, they don't give two craps about you. They will torture you, kill you or whatever. And I think in chapter 21, that's what hit me the most. It was really, really hard. Like, and I gave this, um, I gave this five stars, not because of the story alone, but because of how it was written. I think the writing is phenomenal. I think R.F. Kwong did a fantastic job into writing this book. Um, and that's why I gave it a five star for this for this book. Um, and also I felt like it was real it had it was realistic to warfare. Um, and like I said, if you do read this book, I will uh, let you know now that there's constant warnings, there's rape, there's so much in this book, and like I said, it was very heavy on my heart. But I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the purpose of this book. Um, also the history, because I believe that's what Arakwan was doing um, as far as warfare. And I think she did a phenomenal job with this book. And even on the back, I can read the synopsis just to sum it up for you. If you are interested in reading The Poppy War, it's a very, very popular series. Um, but it says, peasant, student, soldier, goddess. When war orphan Ren aced the Kaiju, which is a test, that she she just she had didn't have a lot of time to study for this and she defeated the odds in her in her town of Takani she was the top of, of the people like uh, the top student that aced it and she only was studying for like two years something like that when her mentor was telling her it takes years and years to get it to, to you know to do well but like I said she defeated the odds and then the empire-wide test to find the most talented youth to learn at the academies. She surprised everyone, test officials, the guardians who wanted to marry her off and further their criminal enterprise and even herself. And that's another thing, her guardians, which Rin is an orphan, they're pretty much trying to marry her off to some merchant or some, some guy. And, you know, she didn't want to do that. But there's like, well, you know what, just to make it easy for yourself, you can just constantly give him drugs and eventually his body will deteriorate. And then you could just be with your, by yourself and just have wealth. And Rin, that's, I'm like, what? Like, what? So that was like, no. Rin, Rin did not want any parts of that. She did not want to do that. She had to get out. And so that's when she took the Keiju and, and passed and surprised everyone. And then, but being a dark-skinned peasant girl from the South is not easy at Sangard, the most elite military school in Nikon. Targeted by rival classmates for her color, poverty, and gender, Rin discovers that gods long thought dead are very much alive. Which she does, she does realize that because she ends up be having since she uh, she chose the pledge to pledge lore, so she was able to learn certain things and about shamans and gods and goddesses. So she was really deep into that craft. And it says, uh, Rin, like I said, Rin discovers that God's thought, long thought dead are very much alive and that she possesses a lethal unearthly power, an aptitude for the nearly mythical art of shamanism that could be the weapon the empire desperately needs. While Nikara is at peace, its enemy and former occupiers, the Federation of Mugen, binds its time and a third poppy war is just a spark away. Ren's shamanic powers may be the only way to save her people, yet as she discovers more about the God that has chosen her, the vengeful phoenix she fears that winning the war may cost her humanity and it may already be too late so in the end of the, in the end of the end of this book she chose Rin chooses revenge and I know in the talk like in the live show for this book some you know I think we all came to agreement like 
why does she do the exact same thing that the Federation was doing? Like she's repeating, repeating it. Like the, like the past, like history always repeats itself. And that's what she's constantly, just constantly doing. She's constantly repeating history and not changing it. But then again, we don't know what happens in the second or third book. Maybe something happens. Maybe she has an epiphany. But right now she is mourning and grieving for Alton. Not just because, you know, he's gone and he sacrificed himself, but because of what he had went through as especially, you know, he has to take drugs in order to get rid of his pain. Um, and I think Ren, after she, she, you know, she looked down on him for that. But then when she found out the reason why, it started to make sense for her. And she felt she was angry with for him and his experience and also angry at the Federation. So she decides to do the exact same thing to the Federation, what the Federation did to Spearly. And that's why I said like she did, she just kept repeat, she repeated the exact same thing. She did not change not one thing. And I think I really feel like she shouldn't have done that. But like I said, we don't know what happens in the sec second book. So I'll definitely be reading that to see what happens. Um, but yeah, I gave it a five out of five stars because um, I like the story, but I also liked how the writing, how the writing is in this book. It's exquisite, it's phenomenal. And I really enjoyed this book. So definitely a five out of five stars for the Poppy War by R.F. Kwan. But that is it. <laughs> that is my crazy February wrap up. Um, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please, please, please give me a thumbs up. Also hit that subscribe button and that bell to be notified when I upload more videos in the future. But thank you so much for watching you guys and please stay healthy and stay safe. See ya.